Hi guys, uh, so we've turned the laser cutter around so that you can see exactly how we're going to hook everything up, um, the laser cutter to the hex box and the ventilation system. Uh, so we're following the steps easily set up for the hardware setup in the quick start guide. Uh, right now we are on step number three, we're going to connect the hex box. So the first thing we do is match the water hoses to the appropriate fitting labels on the laser cutter and appropriate fittings on the laser hex box. You have two water tubes and they are blue and clear, or blue and white, as indicated by the stickers on the back of the laser. So, this little tube is just on here to protect the fitting, so we're just gonna pull that off. And you can see the water in and water out have the blue and white stickers on them. So, blue to blue and white to white, easy peasy. So, you're gonna go ahead and put the blue hose on the fitting with the blue sticker, you just push on. And you're gonna go ahead and do the same on the hex box. And then you're gonna take your clear tube and put it by the white sticker and put it on the hex box. So there are your water tubes. Perfect, the next step is just to uh, attach the air tube that connects also the hex box to the laser cutter. The air tube is this thinner black tube and it is pretty similar. There is a little fitting right here. It is labeled air tube. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and just push that on Make sure it's snug all the way in. And then the same thing, labeled air tube over here on the hex box. Plug that in, air tube. So right, the final thing that we have to do to connect the laser to the hex box itself is just use this connector cord, which actually powers everything. So you're gonna notice that the connectors on the end of this cord have these little tabs. So you need to make sure that the tabs fit the little slots on the connector. So I'm gonna see, this is the one, and that one goes up. And then I'm going to tighten down this little device here. So now your laser and your hex box are connected. All right, the next thing to do is to attach the shroud uh, for the ventilation system. So that's just gonna fit right over here over this one. And there are screws here that line up that are already lined up with these holes. And so you don't need to crank it down too hard. You get it finger tight. And then if you wanna come back in with your screwdriver and just make sure that it is snug, but not overly tightened. All right, and now we are going to be connecting the ventilation hose. And this is gonna work the same way whether you're using the filtration system or whether you're venting externally. So you're going to want hose clamp. You put it on your hose. And then you're gonna slide the end of your hose over the shroud. And that takes a little bit of careful doing, but just be patient. <laughs> like that. And then using your slotted head screwdriver, you just tighten down the hose clamp. And again, you don't need to just crank this down totally, but you want it to be snug so that the hose clamp holds the hose onto the trap. All right, so next what we're gonna show you guys is how to uh, get basically the software running and show you about the touch screen. All right, so we've turned everything around again. We've gone ahead and plugged in our power source. Uh, we're gonna, the first thing we're gonna do is put in our uh, honeycomb into, actually into the laser. This is the cutting bed. You're just going to carefully tilt this in under the laser head, like that. Easy peasy. Alright, so now that we've plugged it in, we're going to fire it up. And what's really neat is that this little screen is going to walk us through the whole process of getting it set up. You can ask us some questions and get the whole process started. Also, if you want the instructions written out, they are in your quick start guide. I'm a big fan of the quick start guide, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead now, uh, we're gonna select a country. We are in the United States, so we're gonna go ahead and touch and select that, and then we're gonna click next. We are English speakers, so we will select English as our language. And then this is the end user license agreement. You're going to read through it very carefully, and then accept. So these are the three things it's gonna take us through, hookup, job prep, and the network. So you're gonna hit next. Um, and this is just reminding you of all of the things we did before. You're going to take out the interior packaging, cut the zip ties, and insert the honeycomb. We've done that, so we're going to click next. 
We have hooked up the water tubes, the air assist tubes, and the power to utility box. That is done. We'll click next. We've done this, attached the shroud to the laser, secured the duct with the two clamps. Next. Now start pump. This is what we're going to do. So we're going to start the pump and fill the tank with water until they're full. So I'm going to go ahead and click start, which will turn on the pump on the hex box. And then I'm going to take this distilled water. And I'm going to really elegantly pour it in here. Now the water is flowing through the tube, so you need to make sure that you're filling the tank and the tube. So just go ahead and slowly add the water. You want to make sure that the tank looks full and that there aren't any bubbles visible in your clear tube. So we're going to let that do its thing for a minute. We've got no bubbles and our tank still looks full. So that's looking pretty good. So then what I'm going to do So we've done that, so now we're going to click next. The tube and the tank are full, so we're going to click stop. And check, we've done that part. So the next thing we're going to do is place our material and focus the laser. So we are working with leather, so we're going to go ahead and put this on the cutting bed in the laser. And then I'm going to use these arrows here on the touch screen to move the laser head to a place where I can focus it. So we're going to move it over here. All right. So now, to focus the laser, what we need to do is take the puck, this is in that little Ziploc bag, the maintenance kit that we told you about. This is the focal length that you need between your material and the laser so that you can get the cleanest cuts and take most advantage of the power of the laser. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your focus puck, you're going to put it on your material between the material and the laser, and you're going to use this screw right here to move the laser head up and down to focus. So turn it counterclockwise to loosen it'll slide up and down. And this allows you to use various thicknesses of material in your laser. So once you've got it resting gently on top of the puck, you can go ahead and tighten that down and take the puck out. Now you're focused. Put your puck in a safe place so you don't. All right, so after we have the laser focused, we're gonna move on to the next screen. This is actually, if you don't remember from watching this video, this is gonna remind you how to place the puck teach you to adjust it and then it's just going to remind you that you always want to keep a clean laser when you're working and there are instructions in the manual please refer to them on how to clean your laser we are going to choose the ventilation system we are using if you purchased the um, bofa box the ventilation system from dremel you're going to choose external system we are going to go ahead and ventilate this to uh, an external so we are going to choose the onboard fan so you just Slide that on over, run the onboard fan, and then click next. And now it is looking for Wi-Fi. So we are going to choose our Wi-Fi network. Hit next. Now I'm going to put in our password. Next. Now the laser is connecting to the internet. So there is a registration address here. Be sure to go online afterwards and register your product. But meanwhile, we're going to hit done. So your laser now has an IP address, which you will need to connect on your browser. And Sarah is going to show you how to connect on the browser. I will say one more thing about setting up your laser cutter. If you notice that when you are closing your lid, one of the sensors isn't triggering, that can be because the laser or the table it's on is not level. If that's happening, there are adjustable feet on the bottom of the laser. You can screw and unscrew them to adjust the height until the laser is level and then the door sensor should work just fine. So you just enter the IP address directly into the browser bar, and what it's doing now is uh, it's just it's basically connecting the laser cutter to the computer itself. And here's all of our software ready to go. And we think that this is an incredible feature, the fact that there's no actual software on our computer. The entire thing runs on the internet. Um, and the software also that we've encountered with the Dremel has been the best laser cutter software that we've experienced so far. So we hope that you guys enjoy it as much as we do. Uh, and next we'll kind of uh, walk through setting you guys up on a project. 
All right, so we're gonna get the software set up so that we're actually uh, about to run the laser cutter. The cool thing about this, uh, the General Digilab laser cutter, is that it's, it functions like a print drive, so you can use a bunch of different file formats um, to actually run your projects. We usually recommend using a PDF because you can do that, uh, using a PDF will, will both cut and etch on the machine. And the difference in how that happens is how you import it, so I'm gonna show you that now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to File, Import, I'm gonna click on here and I'm gonna choose, first I'm gonna choose my cut file. The reason that we need to bring these files in separately is because the, um, the laser needs to know whether you're sending it a cutting path or etching pixels. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead, this is our cutting path, I'm gonna select import cut only, and then I'm gonna select continue. And that's gonna bring this cutting path into the workspace. After that, I'm gonna bring in the etching file. So I'm gonna do the same thing, import, and now I'm gonna click etch on our etching file, I'm gonna open it, and then this time I'm going to import engrave only. So this is now gonna tell the printer that this portion of the file that we're sending over is pixels and it should etch as opposed to the path that it wants to cut. So we're gonna click continue. The software is gonna line up our etching file right where we want it on the cutting file, which is a pretty snazzy little feature. So that's how you import the file into your workspace and let the computer know and the laser know if which parts are gonna cut and which parts are gonna etch. You can run this job together, but now it knows which layers are which. I'm gonna go ahead next and choose our material. The laser system comes with a really handy materials library and it allows you to dial in the settings on your own, but it gives you a really good starting place. These are settings that Dremel has tested for these different materials. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose unstained leather. And that's gonna be the material that we're starting with today. And if I want to dial that in a little bit later, I can. All right, so now I'm gonna show you what I think is the coolest feature of this laser and I'm the most excited about, which is the camera capture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to import, capture, click on that. And now we've put the material in the bed and the laser head with its camera is actually gonna move around and take photos of the material as it sits in the laser bed. The reason this is particularly useful for a company like ours is because we use leather, which is a natural material. And natural materials, they have rough edges, they can sometimes have holes in them or flaws on them. And so what we can do is we can actually take this camera capture and use every piece of the leather. So this is actually taking nine pictures and it's gonna knit them together to give us an image of our material on the laser bed. Pretty nifty. So I'm gonna close that. So now this is the workspace that we had before. You can see my file over here. And in the file, you can tell I'm not on my leather. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select these files and I'm just gonna bring them over here. Now, so now I know that I'm on the leather. So if I drag from the corner, I can select both of them at the same time and then I can rotate them. I can scale them together. I can move them individually. If I decided I wanted to have my etch file in this corner over here, I can. Pretty much do the editing right on the material. So let's say there was a big scar right here. I could just select both of the files and move it up here. So pretty nifty feature that the Dremel laser offers. So let's go ahead and send this over to the laser. We know that we are on the material, so we don't need to run a perimeter test, but if you want to, you can, which you hit run perimeter and the laser head will move around and you'll be able to make sure that you can etch where you wanna etch. But I'm just gonna go ahead and send it over. So it is going to show me what order it's going to do the files in. It's gonna etch first, cut second, and I like that because I like knowing that, um, you know, natural leather can curl up. I wanna keep the focus length where it is, so we're gonna etch first and then cut. We are making sure that we've got our selected material. It's reminding us it's unseen leather, and now I'm gonna select, send it to the cutter. All right, so you can hear the water pump is engaged now and everything is ready to go. All we're gonna do is run these safety checks, which means that we basically just click these three buttons here, and it says that it's ready, so we're gonna click this twice to get it started.
there we go. I'm going to open this up and speak out. Our first cut on our Dremel Digilab laser. Yay! That's pretty exciting. <laughs> so uh, stay tuned. Follow us on Instagram at techdollcraftworks.com where you'll get to see the Dremels doing a bunch of fun little things. You get to see the work that we do. Absolutely. And we hope that you guys will show us your projects too. We know that this is going to be an incredibly useful tool for a ton of small businesses like ours, and we really want to see what you guys are making. So please keep in touch. We look forward to seeing what you do.